Today, Microsoft is highlighting their top technology issues of 2018, a list dominated by many of the same problems plaguing governments and businesses alike. Joining me right now this morning in a first on Fox interview is Microsoft President and CLO, Chief Legal Officer Brad Smith. Brad, great to see you. Nice to be Thank here. Thank you so much for joining us. So you point to cybersecurity as the top issue facing technology this year. I think every time we talk to customers, especially in the world of business, it is so often their number one concern. I think it's a huge imperative for our entire industry, uh, but it's a shared responsibility with customers, and we also need governments to do more. What do we need to do? I mean, we're looking at hacking across the board in, in, in uh, companies, not to mention efforts in governments as well. How could we protect ourselves? Well, I think the first imperative, whether you're a consumer or you're a business, is, you know, Keep your machines up to date. Apply patches. Um, make sure you're applying common sense. If you see an email that comes in from somebody you don't know that asks you to click a link and provide your password, don't do that. It then gets a lot more sophisticated from there. We're seeing governments pour more money into nation state attacks. This is where I think we need governments themselves to engage in addressing this at a new level. What should governments do? Well, specifically, we think that we need rules of the road. Yeah, that's we a good need point. we need governments to come together and you know, say it needs to be off limits, especially to be attacking civilians, to be attacking hospitals, to be attacking the electrical grid. If we can't get governments to do that, it's a very difficult task for the tech sector to make up for the difference. Right, let me move on to your second issue in terms of top issues, and that is immigration, mm -hmm. specifically the travel ban and the fight over DACA, the Dreamers. I spoke with Princeton President Christopher uh, Eisgruber about a letter that he wrote to President Trump with you mm -hmm. in defense of the Dreamers. Here's what he said. Well, what Brad Smith, the president of Microsoft, and I said was that we know from our personal experience with these students on the Princeton campus and as employees at Microsoft, these are people who have spent all their lives in America, who are uh, law-abiding, talented, and hardworking, and it makes a difference to our future as a country and at Princeton and Microsoft that we be able to keep these people at Princeton as they've been promised. I think most people would agree with that. They, they, they've only lived here, right. right, for the most part. Tell us how it affects technology. Well, the lifeblood of technology is people. It's our employees. And it really requires that we have the best and most talented people in the world. In the United States, that means a great mix of people born in the United States and people who've come from elsewhere. We have 45 employees at Microsoft who are dreamers. We have many more employees who've come here lawfully from other countries. Many of them are waiting for green cards. They're worried about whether they're going to be able to continue to work under their visa. It is a cloud that is hanging over the future of the tech sector and the competitiveness of the U.S. tech sector. And the other side, you know, pushing for what they want is to say, look, yes, we want the dreamers to stay here and have a path to citizenship. But at the same time, we don't want it to happen at the expense of American citizens. What do you say to that? I agree. We want a world where we create better opportunities for people in the United States, in every corner of the United States. That's why we're working to bring broadband to rural counties, for example. But we need the kind of very talented people who help create jobs here. They start companies here. It is not a zero-sum game if it is done well and it is doing it well that we have to come together as a country to do. Yeah, it's interesting because when you look at where unemployment is right now, you're talking about almost full employment, right? Mm -hmm. Four percent unemployment is extraordinary, very strong. But from a technology standpoint and corporate America standpoint, people feel like we can't find workers to take the jobs that are actually available. It is a huge so challenge. we need immigration. We, we, we need to do better for our own people, and we need immigration. That is the only way we're going to fill the jobs in the United States. Otherwise, the jobs will get filled somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I understand what you're saying. So what are you doing about that? Well, what we're doing is investing every day in better digital skills for American students. We have a program that is in 349 high schools in 29 states across the country. At the same time, we're engaged every day with the administration, hoping to find the key that unlocks this immigration stalemate. Yeah, you're doing a great job. The other issues on the list are the need for technology in rural communities, certainly, university and the technology industry, the battle over privacy and surveillance. Tell me about privacy and surveillance, because this is an issue that corporate America is 
is spending hundreds of millions of dollars on in terms of privacy and surveillance? Well, How do you see it? The two things need to come together. Our customers need to have confidence that their records will be protected. Individuals, consumers need that confidence. And at the same time, we do have real surveillance questions we continue to work through, really still in the wake of Edward Snowden. We have a case that will be argued before the Supreme Court on February 27th. The Department of Justice is asserting that it can use its subpoenas, its warrants, to go get emails in any data center anywhere in the world. Other countries are saying, no, we need international processes. We don't want a world where every government seeks to reach into every data center everywhere else. Yeah, that's a good point, Brad. All right, I want to ask you about artificial intelligence, but first let me ask you about Microsoft. Yeah. Congratulations. Fantastic performance. The stock once again hitting another all-time high uh, just the other day. What, what's behind this growth? I know you're reporting earnings in the mm -hmm. next uh, week, so you're, you're not going to talk specifics here. But what's driving this growth? How did you and, and, and Satya Nadella manage to turn this ship around in well, terms of growth? I think, first of all, we're living at a time when software is changing every part of the economy. Every business in every sector is realizing that its own path to growth probably involves what we call digital transformation. We've made it our mission to help them use technology to unlock that growth. Part of it is the cloud. Part of it is artificial intelligence. If they succeed, we succeed. It's actually a pretty simple formula. Does the growth at Microsoft in the next five years also come from the cloud? I think it comes from the cloud. It comes from artificial intelligence. It comes from what's called augmented reality, mixed reality, so to speak. And at the end of the day, it comes from our employees and the cultural change that Satya, I think, has really led for all of us. Tell me about artificial intelligence and its role in, in, in this growth story and in society. Well, fundamentally, artificial intelligence is about making machines more powerful, the ability to see, to recognize what they see, to the ability to understand speech, the ability to learn. And what it really means is when you combine artificial intelligence with you know, sort of growing human capacity, you start to find new ways to get more done, to find breakthrough solutions to some important problems, to drive efficiencies and productivity in business. I think we are entering an AI era around the world. No doubt about it. But I mean, robotics and machines, are they taking over jobs? How we're, Here we are having a discussion about immigration. We need more jobs. And yet some of these jobs are going away because of machine learning. I think we can say that three things will be true. AI will eliminate some jobs. AI will create lots of new jobs, and AI will change probably all of our jobs. What it really means is it doesn't matter whether you work at a big company or in a one-person business, we're all going to keep learning. We need to learn new skills. We need to focus our educational institutions and our whole economy on sort of the reskilling that is going to be required. Happily, not in the next month, we have time, but in the, the coming decade and decades, this is going to be part of our lives. Really amazing stuff here, Brad. Great to talk with you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Brad Smith, Microsoft.